All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday morning. It is the Earthmaster out here. 11.01 a.m. California time, July 29th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows, uh, looks like a 5.8 earthquake coming into the Tonga Trench. Pretty deep earthquake there at uh, almost 600 kilometers deep. That's going to be 363 miles deep there. Watch this middle point boundary. I tell you what, a lot of movement here south recently outside of the Macquarie Island region. And uh, movement up north here as well. Put New Zealand right there on the plate boundary in the middle point area. That's normally a region to watch here in terms of uh, potential larger scale activity. So watch New Zealand closely. Also 1.9 up into Alaska. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on here across the west coast first. Got a number of earthquakes out here in the uh, last hour. Lighten up on the map. Double check, make sure mics on, bells are off. We're good. Uh, 2.5 and above. We got one coming in right now outside of the Long Valley Super Volcano. It's a 2.7. Uh, let's see. I wonder if that showed up on the map here. Potentially, maybe this quake here. Looks like the. Uh, 5.8 seismic wave is just starting to show up there in New Zealand. There's a little earthquake coming into Parkfield right now. Uh, not a whole lot of activity stirring up yet. But uh, I remember yesterday we had a number of threes down here outside of Banning, right off the San Andreas Fault, the southern branch. Today, most of that uh, newer activity down south here, kind of scattered, but uh, one thing I have noticed is we're starting to get a little bit of elevated activity out here in this chunk of land. There's a little left pointing arrow here. When this region stirs up, normally that's a sign that uh, things are increasing out here against the plate boundary and the shear zone. Uh, so watch that. Not, like I said, nothing big happening yet, but uh, things are starting to kick up just a little bit there into um, the California, Southern California region. Another earthquake underneath the Bay Area here. Look at this quake. Looks like they added one more from yesterday. Uh, there was only one. Now there's uh, two of them. So 2.0 and a 1.3 underneath that area. <clears throat> Turn this off here real quick. Uh, so yeah, I'm not for sure what's going on here. This is some deeper activity underneath the bay. A little uncertain on to which fault system that uh, is associated with, but it's in between the San Andreas and the Hayward Fault there. Um, let's see. That earthquake down there across Tonga looks like maybe it got upgraded a little bit to a 6.1. And that's interesting here, though, because uh, I just said to watch New Zealand, and literally an earthquake just popped up there across New Zealand, South Island. You guys see that? 4.1 coming in just as just a couple minutes after I said to watch this middle point boundary. That, that's speaking things into existence today. I guess I better watch what I say out here. Uh, but we do have uh, quite a bit of larger movement up north and all that upper six, almost a seven, originally a seven pointer yesterday there, uh, south of New Zealand, well south of New Zealand. Let's go back there and check this out real quick, see what we got. Yeah, 6.9, the biggest quake there from yesterday. But this is not just the only sequence of events going on here. There's been a, a large amount of aftershock activity here. Uh, it is a subduction zone, not a huge one. But uh, unlike the areas up north here, strike slip boundary, there is a, a little trough right here, and then it kind of warps into a oh, this ridge. Very dynamic area uh, for earthquake activity, but uh, getting a, a bunch of aftershock movement there. And of course, this 5.8 right now um, looks like could get upgraded. I know the EMSC was reporting that as a 6.2 right there 6.2 in a red flag and now we got New Zealand stirring up right there with a 4.1 that's rather interesting so the 4.1 in New Zealand appears to be let's see here when that struck stand by for just a second this one was at 1057 and then this quake up here 1053 but it's at a distance there so it does take a couple minutes for that wave to show up but it does look like there was indeed a four pointer out there around uh, the New Zealand area I'm just kind of looking on this map here there's two maybe three different readings here um, 
57 so that would match this signal right here so that's a four pointer this is the six pointer or 5.8 whichever one they're going to go with they keep adjusting it up and down uh, there in Tonga this is a local earthquake 4.1 so I'm telling you guys watch watch New Zealand here closely got uh, with almost immediate activity taking place here between these two zones big time from yesterday and technically over the last couple of weeks it's been really active here and uh, some larger deeper movement up north middle point boundary that's similar to what we've seen up here in Alaska uh, during the last couple weeks with the seven pointers across Alaska and the Kuro Kamchatka we've seen the middle point boundary here very active and portions of New Zealand here as we chatted about last night the Alpine fault there is uh, well it's it's overdue I think here for a big earthquake the last decent rupture last major rupture on the Alpine fault was 1717 AD look at this average slip rate here 38 mm per year that's 1.5 inches per year which is uh, an incred incredibly high amount of slip per year um, let's just do the math here real quick 1.5 inches per year at 300 and um, that would be 495 inches which is 41 feet is that right dang so you 1.5 inches um, times I'm just going 320 years yeah that, wow that's so there's a lot of slip that's uh, been accumulating on that fault system there the Alpine fault there is a 75% chance here that they issued back in 2021 of a of another one occurring before 2068, but I think that's going to happen sooner. That's an incredibly high amount. So this 4.1 that occurred is uh, looks like it's towards the northern end of the Alpine Fault. We can go check them out real quick from the uh, GeoNet servers. Uh, these guys, I guess we need to go here to all. Let's see here. Three minutes ago. There it is. Four pointer right there. They're always deleting a lot of earthquakes on here. A lot of, uh, error in their, uh, preliminary data reporting there from the GeoNet servers. But there's a 4.1. Kind of looks like it's off the Alpine Fault there. Uh, fairly deep as well. That's 137 kilometers deep. It is raised off the globe fairly well there. So, you know, just, you got to watch it, folks. You know, it, it's, you know, how many generations have passed here? What What's happened in the last 320-something years? You know, a lot has. We've built up so much of our infrastructure everywhere across the globe. You know, we're living in the information age where you can send a text message to someone around the world, and it only takes, you know, half a second. To get out information here we're definitely living in the informational age here uh, which is good right when it comes to natural hazards and disasters it helps people be aware of the potentials out here but also you know not many of us have felt an 8.1 earthquake out here you know not many of us have felt the cascadia subduction zone earthquake well not, unless you're 325 years old which or older that's uh, probably not the case out here but uh, you get what i'm saying there's there's been big earthquakes out here that happened hundreds of years ago and some thousands of years ago down, you know, for example, Southern California underneath Los Angeles, the Puente Hills Rust Fault is capable of a 7.5. And that's, you know, been like four to 5,000 years since it ruptured. And here we are way into the future. You know, there's, I think we're going to start seeing some bigger quakes out here because so much time has passed is what I'm getting at. So watch that literally just a couple minutes following the Fiji quake there Tonga Trench technically uh, we get New Zealand moving there so watch that closely here folks let me go back here to the uh, California map and see what we got going on here okay there's that one earthquake that came in within the last hour outside of Long Valley not a whole lot there across Northern California or Oregon for now 
Um, only one earthquake being reported up there at Mount Rainier. I do want to verify that because it's been a little sketchy there in terms of the reporting on the map. So I got to go here to um, uh, the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and take a look here at the Mount Rainier seismograph station here real quick. We're going to look at this one. Okay, They said that there was a little 0.5 or a little one, one magnitude. So that should show up at about six o'clock this morning, local time there. Very, sh well, that's uh, above sea level, which would be shallower uh, compared to the uh, swarm that we've been having on having there. So I see it already. It's gonna be this quake right here. That's a one pointer about six o'clock uh, this morning, local time. So what about this one? <laughs> <laughs> it looks very similar in terms of magnitude, huh? But what about all these other ones? See those? Those are all earthquakes as well. What I am not understanding here is it looks like they've almost halted the uh, reporting out here. Maybe for every 20 or 30 earthquakes that occur, they report one. You guys see that? That's why I look at the raw data. That's a one-pointer. And this looks roughly about the same. Um, I'm just going by what the graphs are showing here, right? We can check out another graph here as well and see if that showed up across this area. There's the one pointer. Now that one, er, well, it still looks like there's a handful of earthquakes out here. So I, I don't think that swarm has halted at all. Maybe they're only reporting 1.0 and above. I don't know. It's a lot of earthquakes to keep track of, right? I do know the intensity has died down compared to what we had seen there, um, you know, over a week ago or so. Well, we can go to the ninth here and check that out. You know, a little bit more active there, right? Obviously, there's quite a few more earthquakes. But back then, they were actually counting every single one of these spikes here. Um, and we're still seeing some, but uh, the reporting has really slacked off a little bit there. So, um, like I say, it's something I'm focusing on. Continue to watch that. I'll cover that quite a bit here in my updates. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there for any swarming. Just a couple small earthquakes this morning. Some through Idaho. Little one in southeastern Idaho, it looks like. A little three-pointer from yesterday. Uh, oil fields down here. Got uh, about, well, let's see, 57 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. A mixed bag from yesterday and today. Nothing big. Um, let's see what else we got here globally. Wow, well, got a bunch of movement out here in the. Uh, ooh, what is that going on out here? One Earth. Well, no, there's a bunch of quakes out there. Jeez, out towards Red Sea area. That uh, right there in the Red Sea. So it started off, it looks like last night there with a couple fours and the magnitudes here getting a little bit bigger. Interesting little swarm out there. Not a whole lot going on up north there, but that's definitely a noticeable uptick there across the Red Sea area. Some movement uh, around the Sumatra area, just north here around the Andaman Sea as well. We've seen some activity stirring up there yesterday with a, a 6.5, but it does look like that swarm has moved northward here. This is a good hundred miles from the six pointer from yesterday. If you look at the legend, the time scale or the uh, mileage scale here, um, yeah, it's easily a hundred miles. It looks like, but uh, now we got a little swarm going on there outside the uh, uh, the Nicobar area towards the Andaman Sea. Quite a bit of uh, unrest going on out here, even into today. Got. Uh, Japan up here, a little bit of movement around Japan. Kuro Kamchatka Trench, not super active, but there is a handful of newer quakes in there as well. Uh, looks like, uh, let's see what we got here for today. Two earthquakes after midnight, 4.5, 4.8. So things are still on the crunch out here, so to speak. There's a 90 mile deep 4.5 into the Kuro Kamchatka Trench there, so it's just a uh, Another active day here, and, I, and I'll keep saying it because when we see this broad scale uptick going on, that means that uh, we're looking at likelihood of larger events happening. That was true yesterday. 
So we'll see what today has in store here because it's, uh, it looks very similar. A little bit of movement up off the coast here of Canada, uh, but the Cascadia holding on for now. Uh, let's see here. 6.6? <laughs> That's a huge difference. 6.6 .6 to 5.8? Who's reporting what out here? Oh, I see. Yeah, they upgraded that. Wait a minute. There was two, earth <clears throat> two earthquakes in there. Okay, they just added that one on there now, it looks like. So we had a 5.8. And then, uh... And then a 6.6. .6. That's a decent size earthquake there. Yeah, no wonder that's showing up there across the uh, seismograph station. Southern California picking up. Parkfield, Petrolia. Here we go. <clears throat> Definitely ramping up out here. So what does that do with the GeoNet uh, earthquake? Is that a legit earthquake there? 4.1? I want to double check that here real quick. All magnitudes here. That one got deleted. That one's still holding steady there 18 minutes ago. So, wow, either way, uptick on, yeah, definitely on the move out here today, folks. Let me tell you. All right, let's go ahead and double check the space weather activity, see if anything else is going on. The sun here is not splitting. <laughs> At least I hope it's not. <laughs> that would be a, that would be a, interesting right all of a sudden everything just starts going outside the laws of physics the sun splits in two and uh, a hologram appears <laughs> man the twilight zone now we see this often here the just imagery malfunction uh, otherwise uh, if that was the case we'd see the uv filter do the same and if that's the case there well then uh, something's going on but it's not that's an air uh, we do have, let's see here, a couple bright features out there on the sun, but really nothing big going on. These sunspots have been acting a little crazy. They've been numerous ones, but they're dying off like really quick here. Really not looking at anything of any noteworthy value out here on the sun, to be honest. I mean, there's we'll be lucky if we get any further sea flare activity out here. I don't really see anything of any major interest out there. Uh, the flare threat has been dropped to 25% chance there. 1% uh, or less for X flare. That's my forecast. These guys are showing a 5%. I, I just think Kevin's not messing with it. Even the C flare has dropped down to 95% chance. No major roars in the forecast. No major coronal holes. Nothing spectacular going on with the sun right now. Quick glance at the Storm Prediction Center here for day one outlook. We got a slight risk across areas of the uh, northern plains again, all up into Montana. Uh, looks like some major wind gust and uh, a little bit of hail threats in there as well. Really nothing for some for uh, any tornado activity there today. But uh, just be on guard. Been a uh, pretty active last couple weeks out here for earthquake activity. There's that signature showing up there all across the uh, globe or the planet here. <clears throat> That's a decent sized quake, 6.6. .6. So there was 5.8 and a 6.6. .6. Crazy. Eventually we're going to hear about our 8 pointer here, folks. That's coming up. The question is where? It could be anywhere. It could be New Zealand. It could be the Tonga Trench. They get big earthquakes up here. It could be Japan. It could be California. You know. If you got a dart, you throw it at the globe and you pick it. I don't think it. We'll see an eight pointer out there, there in the uh, Atlantic, but that's just happened. That's just where I stopped the globe. But uh, yeah, pretty active out here. So have a good day. I'll continue to watch this. I'll be monitoring all this uh, elevated activity here, and of course, if anything changes out here, we'll jump in and provide updates. So have a sell. Have yourself a good day. Enjoy the. Uh, Enjoy your Tuesday. It's supposed to be 100 degrees out here in Northern California again, so yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do. We'll decide, and then we'll go from there. But uh, we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later. Stay safe out there.